ಕಷ್ಟೆ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಹಿ ತನ್ನೇ ತು ಷಟ್ಪಸ್ಯಂ ಬಂಧನ್ ಸುಖದೇವಿಂಬಾತಸ್ವಸ್ತಿಭಿಸ್ಸದಾನ ಅಪ್ರಾಕೃತ ದಿವ್ಯ ಮಂಗಳ ವಿಗ್ರಹ ವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಪರಮಪುರುಷ ಅದ್ರೇಷ್ಯ ಅಗ್ರಾಹ್ಯ ಗೋತ್ರ ಅವರ್ಣು ಅಚಕ್ಷು ಶ್ರೋತ್ರ ಸರ್ವಗತ ಸುಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಪಶ್ಯತಿ ಅಚಕ್ಷು ಶುಮೋತ್ಯ ಕರ್ಣ ಇತ್ಯಾದಿ ವೇದೇಶು ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸು ವರ್ಣಿತ ಅಸಾಧಾರಣ ಪುರುಷ ಪರಮಯ ಕೃಪೆಯ ಸ್ವ ಇಚ್ಛೆಯ ಗೃಹೀತ ದಿವ್ಯ ಮಂಗಳ ವಿಗ್ರಹ ಅಧುನಾ ಸರ್ವೈಹ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಕ್ರಿಯತೆ ಮಾಂಸಚಕ್ಷುಷ ಬಹುಭ ಪ್ರಕಾರೈ ಯಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಬಹುಧಾ ವಿಜಾಯತೆ ಅಜಾಯಮಾನ ಪರಮಪುರುಷ ಬಹುಧಾ ವಿಜಾಯತೆ ಅರ್ಚಾವತಾರ ಮುಖೇಣ ವಿಭವಾವತಾರು ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮತ್ಸ್ಯಕೂರ್ಮಾದಿ ವಿವಿಧೇಶು ರೂಪೇಶು ಭಗವಾನ್ ಚರತಿ ಆಶೀರ್ವದತಿ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಇತ್ಯಾದಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರು ಅಯಂಸರ್ವೆ ಭಾಗ್ಯವಂತ ಯದತ್ರ ಸರ್ವಾಂ ದಿವ್ಯಮೂರ್ತೀ ದರ್ಶನ ಸಮಭವತ್ ವೇದೋಕ್ತ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಆಗಮೋಕ್ತ ಪುರಾಣೋಕ್ತ ಅನುಷ್ಠಾನ ಶಿಷ್ಟಾಚಾರ ಪರಂಪರಾಗತ ಸರ್ವಾಸು ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯಾಸು ವಿದ್ಯಮಾನ ಮಂತ್ರ ಅನುಷ್ಠಾನ ಏಕತ್ರ ದರ್ಶನ ಯದ್ ಲಬ್ಧ ತದ ಅನ್ಯತ್ರ ಲಾಭಾಯ ಬಹೂನ ವರ್ಷಾಂ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನಾನಂತರಮಿ ನ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ತತ್ರ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಶಕ್ಯತೆ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಶಪೆ ಏಕಸ್ಮಿನ್ನೇವ ಮಂಚೆ ಏಕಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಸಮಯ ಬಹೂನ ವೈದಿಕಾರ ಇಖನಸ ಸೂತ್ರವಂಶಜಾತಾನ ಯದ್ ವೇದಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣೋಕ್ತ ಕಾರ್ಯ ಅತ್ರ ಆಚರಿತ ತತ್ಸರ್ವಿ ಅನ್ಯತ್ರ ಗತ್ವಾ ಯ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕರ್ತವ್ಯಂ ವಾ ತೀಕರ್ತವ್ಯಂ ವಾ ಅನುಭೂತವ್ಯಂ ವಾ ತದ್ ಮಹತೆ ಪರಿಶ್ರಮಾಯ ಭವೇತ್ ನಿಸ್ಸಂಶಯ ಮುಖೇ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಸರ್ವೇ ಅತ್ರಸ್ಥ ದಿವ್ಯಮೂರ್ತ ಬಹುಷು ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರು ನಿವಸಮಾನ ವರಾಹಸ ದರ್ಶನ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣೇ ಹೋಮರ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಸ್ಥ ನಾರಸಿಂಹ ನವರೂಪಿಣ ಬಹು ಪ್ರದೇಶು ಯೇ ವಿದ್ಯಂತೆ ಯೇ ಜಾತಾ ಯತ್ರ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಿತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯ ದಿವ್ಯ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಪರಮಪುರುಷ ದಿವ್ಯ ವಿಭೂತ ತತ್ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಅನುಭೂಯತೆ ಚೇತ್ ತದ್ ಮಹತೆ ಲಾಭಾಯ ಜನ್ಮ ಜನ್ಮಾಂತರು ಕೃತ ಪುಣ್ಯಪಾಪಾದಿ ಕರ್ಮಿ ಪೂರ್ವಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಫಲಂಚ ಯೇ ಪೂಜ ಅಗ್ರಜಾ ಪುರಾಣಪುರುಷ ವಂಶ ಉದ್ಧಾರಕ ವಂಶ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭಭೂತ ಆಸನ್ ತುಗ್ರಹ ಬಲೇ ಎಷ್ಟ ದರ್ಶನ ದುಷ್ಕರ ಅಲಭ್ಯ ಲಾಭ ಅಧುನಾಭಿ ಅನುಭೂಯತೆ ನಿಶ್ಚಿತ ಅತೇವ ಕಲಿಯುಗ ಯಸ್ಮತ್ ಪೂರ್ವಿ ಜ್ಞಾತೆ ಮನೆ ತ್ರೇಧಾಯುಗೇ ಪ್ರಾಪಣಯುಗೆ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಸಮಿಪ್ಪಾನಿ ಶ್ರೋತ್ರಿಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿಷ್ಟ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಚಿತೀಕ್ಷೆಯ ಚಾಕಂ ತತ್ರ ಉಪವಿಶ್ಯ ತತ್ರ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಉಷಿತ್ವ ಸಂವತ್ಸರಾಧಿ ತತ್ರ ಉಷಿತ್ವ ಗುರು ಸೇವಾಮಿ ತತ್ರ ಭಾವಯಿತ್ವ ತದನಂತರ ದಿವ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತವಂತ ಪುರಾಣೆ ಅನುಯತೆ ಇತ ಪೂರ್ವ ವಿದ್ಯಮಾನು ವಿದ್ಯೆಷು ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಏಕತ್ರ ಸ್ಯು ಆರಣ್ಯು ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪಿಪಾಸ ಸಂಪನ್ನ ಇತಸ್ತಃ ಪರ್ಯಟನ್ ಗುರು ವಿಷಯ ಅನ್ವೇಷಣ ಬರ ಗುರು ವಿಷಯ ಮೃಗಾಯಣ ಬರ ಗುರು ವಿಷಯ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಬರ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಏತಾದೃಶಿ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಆಸೀತ್ ಪುರ ಅಧುನಾ ತು ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಗೃಹೆ ಉಪವಿಶಂತ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಇತಸ್ತಃ ಪರ್ಯಟಂತ ಸಂತ ಕುತ್ರ ಗಂತವ್ಯ ಕಸ್ಮೈ ದೇಹ ಕಹ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಣಿಯ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪಿಪಾಸೆಯ ಸಾಕ ಅಧ್ಯತ್ವೆ ಪರ್ಯಟಂತ ಸಂತ ಶಿಷ್ಯವರ್ಯ ಸುಖ ಪ್ರಸಾದಿ ಸ್ವೀಕೃತ್ಯ ಬಂಧು ಮಿತ್ರ ಕಳೆ ಸಾಕ ಸುಖಮೇ ಋಣಂತ್ವ ಗೃಹ ಪೀತ್ ಗೃಹೆ ಸರ್ವೆ ಉಪವಿಷ್ಟ ಸಂತ ಅತೇವ ಕಲಿಯುಗೆ ದೌರ್ಭಾಗ್ಯ ಇದಂ ವಚನ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಲಭ್ಯಂತೆ ಬಹವ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ದುರ್ಲಭ ಸತ್ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಪರಂತು ಮಹತೆ ಸೌಭಾಗ್ಯ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ವಿಷಯ ಯತ್ ಇತ ಪೂರ್ವ ವಿದ್ಯಮಾನು ವಿದ್ಯೆಷು ಆಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಾಪರ ತಾಂ ನಾಮ ಅನುವೃತ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚರ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಅನುಷ್ಠಾನ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾನ್ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ದ
ಪರೀಕ್ಷೆ ಪರೀಕ್ಷೆ ತದ ಅನಂತರವೇವ ಜ್ಞಾನಂ ದತ್ತವಂತ ಅಧುನಾ ತು ಏತಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಘೋರ 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 ಘೋರತಮಯ ಕಲಿಯುಗೆ ಸುಖಂ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತು ಶಕ್ಯತೆ ಯಥ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಕಿಲ ಯಥ ಧೇನು ರುಚ್ಯತೆ ಧೇನೋಹ ದುಗ್ಧ ಯದಿ ಕೋಪಿ ನ ಗೃಹ್ಯಾತ್ ಯದಿ ವತ್ಸಸ್ಯ ವಾ ಗೋಪಸ್ಯ ವಾ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನಕರಂ ನ ಭವಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಚೇತ್ ಮಹತಿ ಪೀಡಾ ಸಂಚಾಯತೆ ಸ್ಥಾನಮಂಡಲೆ ಅತೇವ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಆಕೃಷ್ಯ ದುಗ್ಧ ತತ್ರ ಸಾವಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಏವ ದುಃಖ ತು ತತ್ರ ದುಗ್ಧ ಸ್ವದುಃಖಾತ್ಮಕ ಭೂತ ಅನಂತರ ತತ್ತು ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪ್ಯತೆ ತಥೈವ ಆಚಾರ್ಯವರ್ಯ ಸ್ವಯಮೇವ ಆಕೂಯ ಅಯಾಚಿತೋಪಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾಧಾನ ವಾ ದೀಕ್ಷಾದಿ ಕುಂಭ ಕಲಿಯುಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಪಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಇತ್ಯ ತದ್ ಮಂದಮತೀನ ಮಂದಭಾಗ್ಯಾನ ಭಗವತ್ ವಿಷಯ ಭಗವತ್ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ವಿಷಯ ಎ ತೃಣಮಪಿ ನ ಚಾಲಯಿತಿ ತಾದೃಶಾನ ಅರಸೋತ್ತಮಾನ ವಿಷಯ ಕಲಿಯುಗೆ ಮಹಾನ್ ಪ್ರಮೋದಕರೋಯ ವಿಷಯ ಗುರುವರ್ಯ ಯದಿ ತಿಥೀಕ್ಷಾ ಪಿಪಾಸ ಯದಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಸ್ಥ ರುಚಿರ್ ಭವಿಷ್ಯತಿ ಕಾದಾಚಿತ್ತ ಭಗವದ್ ಅನುಗೃಹೀತ ಜನ್ಮ ಜಾಯಮಾನ ಕಥಾಕ್ಷೇಪು ಎ ಲಬ್ಧ ಸಪ್ತಾಹ ಸಂತಿ ತಾದೃಶಾನ ವಿಷಯ ಕಸ್ಯಚಿತ್ ಪುರುಷಸ್ಯ ಸಹಾಯಾಧಿಕ ಸಂಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಎತೆ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯು ಇದು ನಿಯಮ ಅದೇ ಅತ್ರತ್ಯಾನ ಪುಣ್ಯಪುತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಾನ ಎತೆ ಪಂಡಿತವರ್ಯ ವಾರಂಬಾರ ಬಲಂತ ಆಸನ್ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪತನ ನ ಭವೇತಿ ಎಂ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಪತನಸ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಯ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಸ್ಯ ನಿವಾಸೀ ಮಹತೆ ಉದ್ಧಾರಕಾಯ ಸರ್ವಾಂ ಕ್ಷೇಮಕರಾಯ ಯತ್ ಭಗವತ ದಿವ್ಯ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಂತ್ರದ್ವಾರ ಆಗ್ನೇಯ ಭೌಮ ಮಂತ್ರೋಚ್ಚಾರಣದ್ವಾರ ಯಾ ಪರಮ ವ್ಯಾಪಿನಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ತತ್ಸರ್ವ ಅಂತ ಪ್ರವಿಶ್ಯ ಸರ್ವಾನ್ ತತ್ರ ನಿಯಮ್ಯ ಭಗವದ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಭಗವದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಅನುಷ್ಠಾನಾಧಿಕ ತದ್ ದಾತು ಇದು ಭಗವಂತ ಸಂಪ್ರಾಚ್ಯ ಆಂಗ್ಲಭಾಷಾಂ ಸರ್ವಾಂ ಸುಖರ ಅವಬೋಧನಾಯ ಅವಗಮನಾಯ ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ the conglomerations of various dimensions of worship which has been made by our ancestral heritage first we have to say our god is or the conception of god is entirely different from that of the others we believe that god has two forms one is a formless form second is a form we accept that god is having both a formless form and also a form god he has no specific form at all at canada we gave a lecture and somebody asked me whether i can logically prove that god has a form then i told immediately it is possible i just finished within 10 minutes then i told your question is my answer you are telling that god has no form this is a logical base point if god has no form means you are mentioning the form as forms of others our forms of uh, the human limits or any other living creature that has been seen in the world they have some limitations our form has few definitions i say our form is composed of materials they are subjected to existence development evolution diminishing degradation and dissolution our body is a product of karmic imprint our body is imposed by the wish of the nature it is not taken as per our demand or desire so then it told if you define the form or body as something composed of matter something which is a product of karma or uh, the vicious circles of bondage of action and result creation result and impact it is not like that so if you say that body is a composition of matter and an out product of cause and effect synthesis being imposed by somebody else subjected to perishability god is not having that form god is having such a form which is beyond these five elements which is known as parameshti puman nivritti vishwa sarvanama panchoparishan maya apradhira divya mangala vigraha vishishta his body is known as apradhita he consumes his body he assumes his body for three reasons one for the easy contemplation for the devotees and yogis yogi bhi dhyana dhyanam for all upasakas let it be contemplators let it be devotees for devotees they must have a grip and goal see you know that even in uh, bhagavad gita he says that the impersonal form of god is very adverse for these people to practice so god personifies himself out of his own mercy somebody told that we are given name and form to god it has been told in the vedas that we are being given names and forms by god which is known as nama roopa vyakarana namani krutva bhivatam yada hute so says the veda so if the veda says that he has given names and forms to us then that comes the question that we have given him names and forms so his 
transcendental form is of three qualities. One, he has taken this form without the contact of material degradation. Number one, he has taken this form as per the desire and ambition of his devotees and votaries so that it may facilitate the contemplation, worship and sharing of love. Unless it is homogeneous in status, unless the form is there in status, because we are all having only material vision. As we are material in nature, the paramaterial God cannot be easily accessible unless you become paramaterial or he subjects himself to a material form. Thus we have been explaining that to him. There are two options. If you want to climb on an elephant, there are two options. One, you have to climb by your effort or if it is a trained elephant, it will bend yourself as per your height and you can climb on it. God is a trained elephant. He is trained by our devotion, our spotless devotion and dedication and love. So trained by ourselves and our desire and craving to mix with him. In which we want to have communion with him, he bends himself, he assumes innumerable material forms. And the coffins, they have been mentioned in the other scriptures, they are people who consider that idols are God and gods are idols. We consider that God is above material, inside material, he reveals himself in five forms. God who is beyond all of this material space, time and other dimensions, that extra dimensional God of the super string theory is known as Paratva. The God who administers the cosmic activities like explosion, evolution, expansion, conglomeration, federation, disparity, cleavages, unison, fission, fusion, dissolution, all these activities are governed by Yuha. And the God who incarnates himself, bends himself down, who comes, lives with us and suffers, his God is known as Vibhava. The God who is within all of us, he is known as Antaryami. The God who assumes any form as per our desire, he is known as Archa. So we accept five forms of God, which they are told, Ambhasya Bhare Bhuvanasya Vidhye Nakasya Prashtre Mahato Mahiyana Shukrena Jodhi Gushit Samanu Pravita Prachavadish Charatika Bhayanta This Veda Archa, it clearly elucidates the five forms of the God. And each and everybody are totally unidimensional. They see God as unidimensional. Somebody says that He is within you only. Somebody says that He is above you only. Somebody says that He comes for you only. Somebody says it is in idol only. So we are all in advanced position where we think that God assumed His form as per His desire and revealed the form as a product of meditation of people. If God is having Shankar, Chakra, all of these things, they are all personifications. If you have an orbit and axis in the firmament, do you really have an orbit and axis? They are personifications of energy. They are all energy centers and fields. Likewise, Shankara that denotes sound, photosynthesis. Chakra that is effulgent that denotes light, photosynthesis. And Gadha is the explosion or bombardment of atom and explosion of back, big bang. Lotus it denotes Kala, the infinite time. So each and everything it is there in the Astra Bhushana Dhyaya of Vishnu Purana in which God's each and every part and parcel Vigraha, Paridhi, Parikara, Parijana, Magishi, Ayudha, Abharana, all of these things are divine products. God himself, God's divine form, God's so-called concerts, God's so-called attendants, God's ornaments, God's weapons, they are all personifications of universal forces and energies. So we are in a high advanced stage of personifying all of these things and giving forms. These are not the products of imagination but products of realization. We are not given forms to God. He assumed it. We are not imagined by drawing. He revealed in dhyana for great people. They narrated to most of the people. They have seen it and described it in kavyas, painted it in chitras and they depicted the same in the Shilpa Shastra. So Shilpa Shastra carved it. The painter, Chitrakala painted it. The Stotras narrated it because the seers, they have seen that out of their vision because that was their vision and they imparted the same lineage. All the essentialities of the divine form. So we are here proudly to say that we are worshipping the form of a God who is formless but who has taken a form and birth for us. Pita Bhutrena Vitravan Yodhyono Naveda Vimanute Tam Prihantam So says the Vedic statement. God is the father of everybody and he is having no birth but he is assuming birth for uplifting us from birth and death. So only great people can understand that. Naveda Vimanute Tam Prihantam so, God has no birth, but He is born for us. And He has no bondage, but He is binding Himself for the absolute and infinite mercy that He is having on our upliftment process and He binds Himself with us and also uplifts us. A person who is jumping inside a well for recovery for the other person, rescuing the other person, is entirely different from the person who has wet inside by slippery. Both are not equal as they are in the same well. Just as a culprit is inside the jail, the superintendent is there inside the jail. Both are not of the same class. 
and section. Still it's so. Likewise, God is also born. He is also with us. He is with us as an emancipator and we are here as a subjective tool for the cosmic body and he is here as a believer. That is the backbone of our philosophy in which we accept the abodes of God in the form of temples. Temple gives you peace, it gives you serenity, it gives you sanctity. More than the global warming project that you are doing, solar radiation control project, nuclear waste management project, whatever you are doing in science, thousand times more than if the temples are properly organized and worshipped by the administration, by the priesthood and also by the sevarthis, the person who are holding their devotees. If they are properly tutored and organized, it can do thousand wonders, thousand times more than the thing that could be achieved by research institutes and laboratories that can do that. Such much of cosmic splendor and energy is there. In the morning we have seen the God is worshipped in the form of fire. Now you are seeing the same worship in the form of water. There are two things. You need water, you need fire. You have to instigate some energies and you have to quench some energies. It is known as positivity induction and negativity extirpation. Whenever you are doing a sacrifice, what is the difference between Agni? Agni is everywhere. Even in funeral he is the Agni. Even in your kitchen there is Agni. In your lamp there is Agni. Inside you there is a fear, there is a hunger. And there is lust. Everything is in a form of a, a subtle thermal force. Agni is everywhere. But Agni must be specified with initials. Just as a lot of people are there the same initial. If I say Ramaswami, whether it is K. Ramaswami or S. Ramaswami, C. P. Ramaswami here was a very great scholar and theist. Then E. V. Ramaswami was a very great atheist in Tamil Nadu. Likewise, initials must be mentioned. What we are doing is we are creating fire. Anybody can create fire. There does not be an intervention of the Vedic mantras or a Vedic person. Anybody can create fire. But fire has a constructive force which is used in thermostatistics, thermodynamics, thermonomy, thermography and various sciences. They use the constructive force of energy. We know that fire will hurt us. But we know if properly used that fire will produce you food, fire will create you energy, fire will sustain you. You are all based on that fire and heat only you are living. If that fire of life moves, then you will be a corpse. So what is Homa ritual? Fire is having a special address. It is having a special configuration. That configuration is invocable and provocable. That is not there in the natural system at all. For example, if there is a provision, it is known as provisional standard. It is known as a provisional standard. If there are two stones, unless you rub, you cannot create fire. Likewise, if fire, if you don't rub the fire with your sounds, the photo light of the fire and the phono vibrations of your mantras, if you don't rub them, then you cannot invite that type of special configuration of fire which is going to eradicate the evils for you and bestow all of the wishes and blessings on you. So, Ishta Prati, whatever you want to get, you can get through fire. Whatever you want to eradicate the momentum, you can do with fire. Because it is not fire, fire has a lineage. If postman is bringing money, it is, it is a real lineage. There is a person sending a money and there is a post office which receives us and there is a messenger who conveys that. Likewise, whatever we offer, it goes to the God, through the fire. And these things in the subtler returns, they are all brought in different dimensional forms. So if you say the mantra, for example, Agni, Avadi, Ami, Agni has seven tongues. Each and every tongue will have different usage. There is a special Agni Vidya which is not known to the modern ritualistic society. Kali, Karali, Manojava, Sudhobita, Sudhubravarna, Spudinkini, Vishwaruchi. There are seven fires inside this fire. You have to see the particular fire and put the habits inside. If you invite that particular fire, only that particular fire will come. The other fires will be subsidized automatically. So, the fire that you see inside is a special type of configuration which is exclusively meant for your desire. If it is Vishwanathi, it is a work piece. If it is Putra Kama, there are numerous things. Putra Upatti, Putra Vardhana, Jnana Vardhana, Yadhini Varana, Dirgha Yutva, Loka Shanti, Katta Vishega, Rajya Prapti, Nashtar Rajya Prapti, Nashtar Dravya Prapti, Dhana Prapti, Indra Padavi Prapti, Abhavarka Kamaha, Moksha Kamaha, Praja Kamaha, Pashu Kamaha, Dhana Kamaha, Devata, Preeti Kamaha, Maharana Mohana Vashya Stampana Vedara, Aakumshana Ucchara Vitveshara, Grahantara Sanchara, Lokantara Sanchara, Tattva Vadeena, Paragaya Pravesha, Parastal Pravesha, Paragraha Sanchara, Sukhma Vodana, Tattva Nidharana, Vaadharana, Ghanita, Shodhya, Vastra Arankara, Loka Arankara, Rupa Arankara, Taka Vikya Gyanam, Dhatu Vikya Gyanam, Bhotika Vikya Gyanam. So innumerable types of Siddhis are there. For telling each and every specification, there is a separate mantra which is nothing but the arrangement. You know that for your suitcase, it may be 638, may be number for opening. For some other thing, it may be 906. Likewise, there is a standard code of sounds in the form of padas, padas with swaras and padas and swaras in a krama which is known as a vakya mantra. So, purva nishchita, anivarya aparivarti tabya, Mantra Shabda Tadaswara Aksharanam Samuha That which
which is an uninterruptible order which is made of sounds for example if i say om hrim ayam namaha it is such an order that you must not give a pass you must not change the accentuation so tone pitch scale accentuation note resonance everything must be so proper <laughs> so mantras are the skills of photosynthesis and rituals are the skills of photosynthesis whenever you offer things that i have been explaining today there are three things if you throw things inside your stomach it is consumption if you throw something inside the earth it is cultivation it grows multiform that is known as agriculture if you throw something in fire it becomes ash reduced into residue same thing properly if you told me mantra then all the things that are were offering inside will be broken into the primary units you are eating idli in dosa you are taking puri and various things they are not absorbed as idli dosa and puri they are disintegrated into the natural primary ingredients likewise if you pour curd inside the curd the peripheral surface is consumed by the peripheral fire but the inner invoked or provocated fire or instigated divine fire it consumes the subtle ingredients if you for example if you put vastra you will get lot of vastra somebody asked if i want a child should i put some child inside then <laughs> it all is not like that there is consecutive identity dadhi putra dadhir vai putra if you put curd both curd and the progeny they have consecutive identity so you need not put any child inside the ritual fire if you put curd itself that is a probably you to get a good progeny so whatever peripherally you are putting inside the form of gold silver or valuable clothes or anything else inside the peripheral things are consumed by the peripheral fire the inner fire that is known as auto thermodynamics this science so these ontological are the basic stages of the fire the subtle energy it consumes the subtle ingredients what is the subtle ingredient the shraddha the sincerity the belief the precision in the mantra everything is totally encompassed in the subtle ingredients they are taken away that is why it is not agni agram nayati ki agni as it is a heavenly ambassador or a messenger which takes everything to the heavenly abode it is known as agni so whatever you put inside that will not be destroyed it will be multifold so it is known as agni yagya so whatever that you offer on the divine form of god that also will get multifold there are three types of rituals whatever you are putting inside the earth will become multifold that is known as agriculture whatever you are put, uh, putting inside the fire sacrificial fire systematically as per the ordain in ordainment and the stipulations of the vedic principles everything will be multifold that is known as thermoculture whatever you are offering to the god as we is the basic unit of the world that will give multifold that is known as auto culture agriculture thermoculture and auto culture these are the cultures of our land more than that somebody asked if a child is crying why you are pouring milk in the god then i told that if you directly pour milk with the god immediately it is not going to quench the milk necessity for the child but there are two things consumption and cultivation whatever you offer to god if you give the child the milk immediately it will be quench the thirst or need it will be uh, satiated it will be propitiated but if you offer milk to god with a real desire and devotion with a universal cosmopolitan altruistic mentality two things will develop milk will develop in the society if milk has to develop there must be grass development if grass has to be developed there must be cows for producing milk that will develop if grass has to be developed then there must be proper rain for rain will develop if rain has to develop there must be proper religious and morality that will develop if you offer a spoonful of milk to a child it will start crying but it will start crying after four hours but if you offer the same thing it is not avoiding the child's benefit or avoiding the child's thing making a primary focusing on the divine form of god if it is offered suddenly you get the multiplication of milk grass sources rain sources religiosity and morality sources that is the greatest in offering so offering anything to god is a prudential investment not expenditure it is not a waste but cultivation so everything should be offered to god is the rule of our land and moreover somebody should ask what is tirumanjaram i have already told how this works how this works it has five regions one who are physically present here it radiates who are going to see the persons available here your neighbors and strangers it radiate and also permeate inside you as you are in the physical proximate domain you are radiated then it permeates the atmosphere the sound vibrations it permeates the atmosphere and uh, the those who are in the closer first circle they get more benefits second circle they are also getting benefits suddenly there is a very great wonderful phenomenon which is known as universal consciousness i'll tell you a role of 
universal consciousness, everybody will be totally horripilated and mesmerized. Somebody told there is a Chinese proverb, very wonderful proverb, but also mentioned in the Vedas, you cannot pluck a flower without disturbing a distant star. That is the nature of the binding on the internet surface of the world. Whenever you are plucking a flower from this place, certainly, infinitesimally, at least, far beyond the proportionate wisdom or proportionate perceptibility of your limited self, you are disturbing a distant star. So it is known as the project of universal consciousness which has been now undertaken by Princeton University. They have recorded the mind wavelength and setup of various people in various areas. Whenever great calamities happened, knowingly or unknowingly, willingly or unwillingly, they had a response, they had a shock in their mind. The twin tower, whether it may be artificial calamity or it may be a natural disaster like tsunami, everybody should respond. You must know that we have to live together or die together. So, as we are closely present, these radiations are getting inside and we are having two problems. We are having the presence of unnecessary elements and we are lacking the necessary elements. So, this radiation, it interferes into our mind and it also capacitates us to develop the qualities which are required for universal peace at least to develop peace within ourselves and to our dependents, followers and surroundings, then we can pray for other things. That is what I say in the charity lecture I told. Three things. Work for your development, try for the development and charity of others and pray for universal charity. What you can do for yours, you can work. You can try for others within your mind. But for all others, what we can do is we can pray. Now also we are going to pray. If you say, Vishwe Devaha or Vishwa Shanti, that includes Ethiopia, Somalia, Burma, Bhutan, Bangladesh, all other countries are included. Even though they are not thinking about India, India is always thinking about Vishwa, Vishwa, Prapancha, Loka. Everywhere we are thinking, without mentioning the names of the nations, we are thinking about that. So this fire, it radiates and produces good qualities. Now we have seen Tirumanjana, which is called as Abhisheka. It is, uh, that's what I have been explaining to my neighbor, that there are two baths. If you pour all transcendental and auspicious ingredients to God, it is a divine bath. If you think of God and take bath, it becomes holy bath. So now we have had the divine bath and thinking of this divine bath, seeing this divine bath, experiencing in our internal space the same bath, it has made us to create a holy bath which cleanses us from all sins, errors, evils, mistakes and other past time repetitions. Everything, whatever that they think of, totally uprooted away. So this is for quenching the heat. Whenever you take bath, you are relieved of three things. One is Kashmala, second is Ushna, third is Ayasa, that is known as Sranapala. Whenever you are taking bath, taking bath is also, it is known as Hablology, which is the study of bath, taking bath. To take bath, your heat is reduced. And your the so-called Kashmala, the unwanted Mala or Kashmala, that element, that dust of darkness that is removed. And the third thing is Ayasa, you are becoming fresh. Your fatigue is removed. My point is, if God is done with all of these things, it does not mean that, mean that He is having all of these things. It is for us to remove ourselves from the tension, from the threat. We are having a lot of insecurity. So, there are two things which I want to say and conclude this session. Whatever you are doing to God is for benefiting you because it is the cultivation I have already told. Whatever you are pouring in the form of milk that creates prosperity in our houses, then madhu, that is honey that creates mellifluity, sweetness, which is very much essential in conflict resolutions, relation building, harmony, border dispute resolution. We have a lot of other things like that. So this honey is like that. And ghee is the essence of the world. Why you are offering ghee inside the fire? Not because it is a fuel, because petrol is a more powerful fuel. Why it is not offered? If it is just a fuel to augment fire, why you are not offering it? Because it is the essence. Because Sarvasar Bhuhu. Bhusarastu Trunam, Trunasaro Rasaha, Rasasaro Rudra, Rudrasaro Paya, Payasara Dadi, Dadi Sara Namanikam, Namanika Sara Dritam. Everything is there in the essence of earth, and earth is having datus. Datus are converted into the form of grass. The rasa is having sara. That is the essence in the form of uh, that uh, assimilation inside. That rasa is converted uh, by a process. There are two conversions. One is a hematic conversion, second is a lactic conversion. In the hematic conversion, they are converted into rudira. In the lactic conversion into paya or milk. Then the milk is converted into curd by fermentation. Then it becomes the essence by churning as namanita or butter. When it is molten, it becomes ghee. And ghee is the culminated status of the essence of health. So whenever you offer, there is nothing else to offer. It represents the whole kingdom. Just as MPs 
the parliament, they are representing the whole people of the society. 100 ingredients were offered. There are 84 lakhs of species in the world. They are having the representation in the form of 108. Just as 500 and odd people represent 100 crores of the population of the country, 108 ingredients represent 84 lakhs of species in the botanical, zoological and the social kingdom of the society. The whole earth not even India. So, this type of uh, Thirumanjanam or Abhishekam or the divine birth that totally relieves us from those hindering factors which protects us from going towards dynamism and success. So, it is a very great opportunity for us to have everything. We have Vedas, we have Puranas and we have Divya Prabandha, we have rituals, we have Abhisheka, we are having Anankara, we have Archana, we have Aradhana, we have Prasada, we have Anugriha Vajana, we have Mantrakshata here, we heard Sangeeta, there is nothing known as Natya, but uh, actually the previous singer who sang, he also demonstrated few Natyas out of his uh, <coughs> uncomfortable status, he demonstrated some Natya also. So all of these things totally put together is a feast to our soul. Whether our mind can understand it or not, whether our intellect can comprehend it or not, our spirit understands it, it is a rare feast. It is a transcendental banquet for each and everybody and I wish that each and every member of this Pune society must have this anniversary possibility of relishing this divinity with the vigor of which they can totally make their anniversary the whole year, huh? they can make it so polishedly, so smoothly, so lubricatedly, so successfully. So I wish that it should happen not only in these places, in all places. It must not only be a material ritual, it must be a mental or internal ritual. So by thought, by memory, by the reverberation of my words are the mantras which you have heard here, by also reinstallation of the rituals, by picturizing inside your mind, we have to daily bring this ritual to your mind, I will be benefited and let this area be free from disruptivism, rowdyism, terrorism and all other natural and artificial, that is the man-made disasters. Let there be peace and comfort for all and let it permeate from Pune to all the other proximate places. Let each and every place uh, and the members residing there must take a bow, a determination that they must work with the rituals, with the realization, with the recitation of mantras, by working physically, by dealing with the imbalances of the society, by various modes. I wish that everybody should reunite and you know that whatever may be the provision inside, there must be a switch for that. There are a lot of people dealing with world peace, somebody dealing with education, somebody with political reforms, somebody with economical reforms, somebody with uh, NGOs and NGO bases dealing with various issues. Somebody while fighting against gender discrimination, racial discrimination, etc. Somebody against nuclear message and weapons of mass destruction. All of these people, they constitute a well-assembled mechanism, whereas a spiritual delight and a spiritual inspiration or urge is a switch for it. Unless it is done from India, anybody's work will be a very limited work, insufficient and inefficient. I pray that it should happen soon and that the whole will be benefited. Narayana, Narayana.